I don't know what's going on, let alone where I am. But I don't understand this. Where am I? Who is everyone around me? How did I get here? Why am I in these clothes? Was was everything... What's happened to me? I can't remember a lot. Fragments. Pieces that don't add up clearly. Something that doesn't make sense either. Where am I? Where's my mother? Where's my father? They won't tell me where I am anymore. They don't even acknowledge that I'm awake. I woke up strapped down to a table. Or at least I think it was a table. I don't know. I don't remember this place. And it, it feels scary. Hell, they don't even tell me the month, the day, or even the time. But I don't understand it. Why do they have me here? I could use the, that thing, right? What I did before? I can do it, right? Why isn't my powers working? Why am I stuck here? Where the hell am I? Now, hello, hello everybody. This is Kira Show here. Now, whenever we last left off, Izuku Midoriya. Yeah. Things have been a bit crazy and a bit odd. In fact, after going to a Foundation site and meeting SCP-343, yeah, that did not go so well. Midoriya was above a man people perceive as God, the creator of the universe. And Midoriya also did encounter another SCP. For all Midoriya's hard work at the Foundation, they had the idea to see Midoriya's reaction to SCP-999. Midoriya's brother, he had a very good reaction to it. Well, Midoriya himself had a very negative reaction. In fact, Midoriya seems to be the first person to ever display signs like this. Midoriya's reaction to SCP-999 was one of discomfort. Instead of experiencing joy, he seemed to experience fear. Completely opposite effects from what his brother was feeling. And there were many theories. However, there was at least something that the Foundation did jot down. Midoriya... He cannot use his reality-bending powers. The Foundation, they think that they have a fundamental way to contain Midoriya, in case of a threat. Yeah. Midoriya and his brother are seen as above or beyond level 5 reality-benders. Level 5 simply being that he can snap you out of existence. However, from every display the foundation is marked down or even seen them demonstrate their powers it is clear that they are not level 5. In fact there was an idea. Midori and his brother could actually summon the 36. The 36 children. Now for those of you who aren't aware the 36 is basically anomalous humans when all 36 of them are brought together, it is speculated that all anomalies will cease to exist and simply disappear. Now, that was actually a very odd idea and something that Dr. Bright himself sort of brought up. Now, the SCP Foundation they aren't above trying to test this theory. However, if it will wipe out anomalies, then it isn't wrong to assume it would also wipe out those two boys. So, there were a vote. 
Well, there was a vote. Many of them being on undecided. Some being against and only very few and in between being for it. Now, I won't give the exact numbers, but let's just say that half the foundation were not voting. They simply didn't have a proper opinion on the matter. Now, let us cut to Midoriya, who is simply hiding in his room, running around and trying to figure everything out. Now, whatever just happened was very crazy. And Midori is staying there, locked up, simply trying to understand. Anytime he throws out his hand, flicks his wrist, or tries to do anything with his reality bending powers, nothing works and nothing happens. However, his other abilities, the quirks he gave himself, they are still there. Midori being able to demonstrate this whenever he does, fly through the air. Pick up objects and bring them to him. And actually try and think for a minute. Trying to understand. There is no logical way that the encounter with the SCP turned off his abilities. If they did, his brother would not be able to bend reality. He has the exact same amount of power as Midoriya and comes from the exact same universe. So why? Why is it that both of these two had different reactions to that thing? That SCP. It doesn't make sense. They said that you experience joy and happiness and smell things that, well, are nice to you. His brother described smelling home. Smelling pancakes and bacon in the morning. And even that odd smell in the air. The smell whenever his mom cleaned. It doesn't matter whatever, well, cheap spray she bought to make the house try and smell nice. She usually tried lavender. And she even tried, what was another one? I can't really think of another one, but let's say she also tried many other things. Until there was that one smell that always made things calm. It smelt perfect. He didn't smell it. In fact, the best thing that he can describe is the smell of alcohol. The smell and sounds he heard. The pictures. Dry, stale air. And nothing but a white void, with dots floating in front of his face. Why? Along with that sound. Something jingling. Why? Doesn't, it doesn't make sense. Midoriya is simply driving himself crazy. As he begins to try and draw what he saw. Draw the images in his head trying to understand and make some form of sense in them. Now, let us cut to roughly about three weeks later. Midoriya's encounter with 999 has not been well. In fact, he's stayed locked in his room for three weeks. Any request that the O5 Council make for Midoriya, he does not respond to. This being seen and noted down by the Foundation. The loss of his abilities and the loss of his power. Midoriya's brother fills in for him, creating a fake body double. That explains what is going on to the Foundation. Directly to the O5. The real Midoriya is seeming to suffer from some sort of episode. It seems to be a form of PTSD, or post-traumatic stress. And it's getting a bit worse. In the oncoming weeks, he has just been in the room, drawing and sketching. Images he himself does not understand, nor remember. Now, 
the foundation, they do take this into consideration and begin their own plan of action. Getting reality anchors set in place and putting them onto a system. SCP-343. He is going to be given a button. If he feels any slight change in reality, then he is given permission to press it. This will put the real anchors on and stop any further effects from happening to reality, saving the foundation. The Earth, however, they are not too sure. The fundamental space around them will be okay. Hopefully, they are not too sure. This is in case Midoriya's power does return, and he enters that stage, the childhood god stage. What would he do with that power? Now, with that being said, Midoriya is back in his room, and many people are trying to get his attention. No one really even making it through the door. Until Midoriya's brother simply just walks through it. And tries to talk with him. Tries to reason with him as he is using his fingers. His pencil has broken multiple times. And so is the markers and the inks that he has. All scattered about. So his brother simply makes him more hoping that it will at least trigger some form of response from him. Midoriya simply taking the paints and beginning to draw more, beginning to just put sketches onto the walls, thinking that he's gone mad, trying to understand it all. As Midoriya spends the next three days awake, painting a mural, before Midoriya he is done, and he finally backs away from it, stepping away and looking at it and seeing it. It is the exact picture he had in front of him, the one he does not understand. There are multiple doctors in this picture, and then there is him. There he is, strapped down to a table. Or a chair. Whatever that is. Is this even the right memory? Things keep flooding back together. Keep mixing. They don't make sense. As he just begins to look at the continuing pictures. That he drew. The next picture is of Midoriya kicking something with his leg. And he does hear the jingle. The shaking followed by metal hitting the ground, before hearing a drill, and then a scream, and a pain, as he falls onto his knees and grabs the side of his head, and brings it back to find blood, confused and trying to understand everything, as fear is in his eyes. Fear does not make sense. He is a god. He shouldn't be able to feel, feel fear. Not like this. No. <laughs> Midoriya turning around to see his brother, who is simply standing there. The world has gone dark. As his brother simply just walks towards him and bends down, saying that he is so, so sorry. As he gives his brother a hug, Telling him that this is not how he was supposed to find out. We were... I was going to ease you into it. Midoriya grabbing his brother by his hands. And asking him what he means by ease him into it. Ease me into what? The, the truth. You... Can bend reality, yes. The power and the extent you have... You saved yourself. S save myself from what? 
your true reality. What? His brother simply disappearing. As Midoriya tries to gather what remains, trying to clutch away at the dust flying throughout the air and around him. As the world changes. And Midoriya sees it. And he hears the voice. As he wakes up in a room, beginning to simply just look around. As he hears his brother's voice, telling him that the truth is quite simple. You thought that the truth was this. A nuclear war caused by the ugliness of man. I wish it was that simple. In fact, you know it wasn't. Whenever the world got ugly, whenever it got cruel, whatever we did to it, whatever you did to it, brother, Midoriya, it was ugly. It was bad. You wished for the bad man to go away. I know you. I see it. No more hiding. No more games. I was the part of your subconscious that kept you alive. The peace that fought for humanity. I could tell you what every single one of those things you saw meant. But I think you know. They were feelings, emotions, and things you've experienced. Midoriya is simply just looking around. As he's there, standing up onto his feet. As he smashes into a wall, quickly turning around and seeing it. It is one of the things he saw in those visions. And, well, it doesn't make sense as he tries to move his hands. His hands are bound. He's in a straitjacket. Now, this is also very weird. As doctors come running in, as soon as they do open the door and see Midoriya, Midoriya is quite surprised to see a few people. There, standing in front of him, is Dr. Chloe and a man with a name tag, Dr. Bright, with a necklace that looks similar to what he saw in his dreams? No, it couldn't be. And then there's another doctor, Midoriya confused in seeing all of them, going to open his mouth to say something. As soon as his lips move and he just asks what happened, the doctors are stunned. They are completely in shock. This boy is reacting. This boy hasn't reacted since that day. Since the incident. Now, with that being said, Midoriya, he's confused. Trying to use his abilities. Trying to manipulate reality. Flicking his hand or his wrist inside of the straight jacket. Trying to get it to come undone. As it is not. It doesn't work. And he simply does try to run past the doctors. Trying to understand what is going on. Now. Bedoria. He directly smashes into Dr. Bright. Hitting him in his left shoulder and taking off running as he runs down the hall, trying to understand it, trying to get his hands free and trying to understand the world. Running down the hallway, he can see it, looking outside. The world is normal. There's no nuclear war. There's no anything. So what did he do? What did he do wrong? Is this the real world? Where am I? Now, Many of those thoughts are going through Midoriya's head, as he is tackered by an orderly, and dragged back into the cell, the padded cell. And the doctors do try and talk with Midoriya. 
until they do have to sedate him and give him his medicine, injecting him with a syringe full of the experimental cork suppressants. As Midoriya lays there asleep and unconscious, as the doctors begin to discuss their next form of action. The boy, well, he shouldn't be able to do that. Whatever Midoriya is, is clearly beyond their control. Now, the doctors do actually make a phone call, informing somebody that the boy is back. The boy is awake and conscious. Now, with that being said, this is actually quite interesting. And the person does say that they understand. And they would like to understand a bit more. Continue for the study of the boy. Now, the next day, Midoriya does actually wake up. And he's sitting up against the wall, Dr. Chloe stepping into the room, and Midoriya simply just looking up at her, before looking back down, and he has his legs crouched very close to him. Now, she actually does ask Midoriya what he remembers, to which he simply says nothing. He doesn't know anything. Now, the woman, or Miss Chloe, says that she should have suspected that, wanting to know more about this young boy. Asking Midori if he remembers being back at home with his caretakers. Caretakers? You mean my mother? Um, I'm sorry, young man, you don't have a mother. W what? Yes, you... well... We're not too sure. Initial report says that whatever happened to you, you were in an attack. And, well... yeah. Apparently, things were odd. The space we found you in, or the condition, was bad. Then, the number one hero, Endeavor, had to, well, step in on a number of occasions to solve some of the problems that we believe you created. Wait, Endeavor? He's the number two hero. I'm sorry? Y yeah, that can't be possible. All Might's number one. I'm sorry, Izuku, who is All Might? All Might? He's the greatest hero ever. He's the symbol of peace. He smiles. He saves everyone with a smile. But are you getting defensive? Simply smiling and saying that All Might was there at his house that day. Along with a bad man. The doctor writing this down. As she does actually walk out. Simply telling the other doctors that the boy seems delirious. Or, at the very least, he may have created fictional characters, brought them to life, and believes that whatever happened that day was because of a man named All Might. Her bringing her hands up. All Might, huh? That is a very odd name. What's his quirk? I don't know, but, well, sounds familiar, right? Um, I don't know. It feels familiar. It rolls off my tongue pretty well. You're, you're exaggerating. Don't play into his fantasy. The boy clearly made this man up. A symbol of peace who smiles? Yeah. This is just like making up an imaginary friend after something traumatic happened. So, that is what I believe is going on. The boy simply made up this person, made up this hero. 
Now, with that being said, I do hope you guys enjoyed. And have an amazing night. I will catch you guys in the next part. And yes. Oh, excuse me. Okay. This is what I was going to do with the series. I was going to take it away from the SCP organization. But, with a lot of the things going on in the SCP universe, yeah. I'm, I'm deciding to skip over a bit of things. Since that would probably mean that I had to add 20 episodes, or probably even 10 just to get to this point. So I'm deciding to skip all over that. Because, long story short, Reality Bending Hunters build his way up to the Scarlet King, tear apart the SCP universe, back to reality. Now, with that being said, I do hope you guys enjoyed.